but it, it would be interesting to hear about what uh so what type of equipment uh you're you're running especially your your kind of boom mics since we've, we've been oh, focusing well, so much on the I, I i have um i was convinced um actually firmly convinced um once and for all on the film being there um that the Sheps hypercardioid is the best microphone there is in the world um, to record uh, motion picture dialogue. Um, and I fell in love with the microphone. We'd been playing around with it on, on other movies, but hadn't managed to really get ourselves off the 416 and various other microphones that um, after using the Sheps, realizing that all those other microphones that we had been using, they're fine. But what you get with those microphones, you know, like a 416 or any any of that sort of microphone, uh, is you get movie sound. It's true that <laughs> it sucks the voice up. It's very directional and all that. But what we found with the Sheps, which is a much gentler pattern, a much smoother pickup, um, we did a scene. We did five takes on a scene right in the streets of Washington, D.C., very, very noisy. Um, and again, we weren't using wireless. Um, we did three takes with um, uh, with the 416, and then we did two or three takes with the Sheps, uh, you know, with the with the 41, you know, the hypercardioid. Um, next day at Dailies, I swear to God, it was like even for a novice listener, it was night and day, which was better. Um, uh, the Sheps just shined because. Um, what happens with a really directional microphone um, is, sure, you, you suck that voice up, and you're and you're. If you look at the meter, you're actually getting less background, but the background um, with with a really directional microphone loses its coherency. It loses its its reality. So that, for example, when a car goes by in the background with a four sixteen, okay. Um, when that same car goes by with the Sheps, um, it's true, it comes in at a higher level, but it goes by and you can say that, that was a Volkswagen Beetle. You know, you actually, because it goes, oh. And in other words, the car going by sounds as good as the voices sound. Um, and that kind of honesty, for the most part, now I'm not talking about shooting like right in the middle of traffic <laughs> in Manhattan or something where, you know, that Sheps would buy so much garbage that it, would, it wouldn't be any better or worse than the 416 or an 815 or whatever. Um, but uh, I realized that it's worth putting the Sheps up first and seeing if you can do the scene that way, unless it's obvious that the shot is way too wide. You're not going to be able to boom it anyway. Uh, but so we ended up using the Sheps as the main microphone and using it indoors and outdoors. We had to develop windscreens because there weren't any windscreens that could, you know, a microphone which was generally designed to record um, music indoors in a studio. Um, you know, we were taking it out in the desert. We were taking it out in the streets of Manhattan, um, you know, or actually the streets of LA and various other places. Um, and even some of my other fellow sound mixers that had kind of fallen in love with the microphone in a way, they said, you're, you're using it outdoors, you know? I mean, how are you keeping the wind off it? How are you keeping, you know, what sort of shock mount are you using? Because it's also a very sensitive microphone, you know, um, to the point that a lot of people have said, you know, I can't even use it. You know, there's too much low end, you know, I'm getting a lot of rattle off, you know, from the, the, you know. Well, first of all, you have to look at the sort of shock mount they're using. Um, we actually designed some of our own shock mounts. You know, Don Sufal, my boom operator for the last 37 years, um, he fell in love with the sound of that microphone. He fell in love with what he could do with it as a boom operator. Um, uh, the results were spectacular. We were really recording really good sound, and it was being appreciated by everybody, you know, not just the director on the day, but the people in post. Um, you know, looking at a scene on the screen and saying, you know, I don't know how you did this. That's either the best sounding wireless I've ever heard, or you couldn't have been booming that, could you? And I said, yeah, you know, that's Don Sufal, one microphone and a fishbowl. They go, you know, they're, they're shocked. But it is a risk because we were doing something that, that not a lot of other people were doing. You know, taking this little microphone, um, primarily designed for music and all, taking it outside, 
and recording, um, you know, even distant pickup. I mean, we did stuff like I'm an officer and a gentleman um, with, um, you know, the whole, um, uh, uh, you know, cast doing, you know, what they call Jody calls uh, way off in the distance, you know, da, 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 you know, all those cadence calls, things like that. One microphone up there. They come up to camera. They get louder and louder and louder. And then they go by the camera and they get quieter and quieter and all that, you know. And in today's world, you know, we would have put mics on, you know, I wouldn't have, but somebody would have put mics on everybody and then they would have put another and they would have put a stereo pair up here and all this and they would give them all because we can do multi track so easily now. Well, back then, I had to decide what's going to go on that one track I've got, you know. And the only thing I had to rely on was my ears and quite a lot of experience. 